All right, lab seven. Let's look at question number one. So a test taker answered 50 true false questions, received a score of 60% correct. Report the results of a binomial test and explain whether you think the test score could be produced by the test taker randomly guessing on each question. All right, so the binomial test is appropriate here. I'm going to use the binome.test function and if I just needed to remember how to use it, I could do this. X is the number of successes. So there was 60 successes. N is the number of trials. Oops, sorry, there was 60%. Um, ooh. So there was 50 trials. Uh, 0.6 times 50 is 30. So there was 30 successes out of 50. And I want to know if I think that the person could have got 60% correct or greater by chance. So I will list here the alternative as greater. I'm going to run the test. And the p-value is 0.10. And uh, that's the code you could use to produce a p-value from a binomial test. Uh, I'm not going to answer the rest of the question. Um, and that's for you to explain whether you think the test score could be produced by a binomial process. An examiner wants to test, or sorry, wants to make a true-false test, but is still uh, deciding how many questions they will include. Um, they want to make sure that it will be difficult to simply randomly guess and be able to score any higher than 55%. So how many questions would the examiner need to use to be confident that scores of 55% or higher were not produced by chance? Okay, well, this is a bit of an open-ended question. And I'm just going to show you one way that you could do it. And one way could be something like this. I'm just going to use the binome.test function. And let's put in... Um, well, X is the number of successes. I'm just going to do 55. And N equals the number of trials for 100. So that's 55%. And the alternative equals greater. And really, I'm just kind of going, taking a look at this. All right, so if you had a test with 100 true-false questions, 18% of the time, you'd get a score higher than 55% by chance. Now, that doesn't give me confidence. I, I, I want to bring this number down. I want to increase the number of trials, 100, so that the probability of getting higher than 55% goes down. Now I have to wiggle a few things here because if I just say, well, let's have 200 trials, 55 out of 200 isn't 55% anymore. It's 27.5%, so I have to double this, 110. Okay, so if I had 200 trials, you could get 55% um, eight, eight or nine percent of the time. That's just, I want to get it, you know, very confident that a value like that wouldn't be produced by chance. What, what's my personal level of confidence? I don't know. One out of a hundred, let's say a hundred people take the test. One person could get greater than 55 percent by chance alone. That's, it's a, it's a little bit unfair to the rest of the class to be quite honest. 
half a person, how about? So less than 1%. Let's double it again, see where we're at. Let's make the test 400 trials long. Okay, well, even that. So if the test was 400 trials long, I had 100 people take the test, roughly 2.5 of those people would get a test score greater than 55%. Or if we double it again. Whoops, 440. Okay, here we go. We're now less than 1%. Um, so this would be good. I, I, I would be okay with this. I mean, 800, 800 questions. Yep. So I would need to have my test have 800 questions to be sure that getting greater than 55% is not by chance. Um, I could probably have a few less. You know, if I made this 700, I could probably figure out the right number here. But you saw what it did. This is fine. If I wanted to optimize this, I could go and uh, try something slightly different. But for now, I'll just leave it just like that. All right, let's check out the last question. So a test has five true-false questions, okay? Um, and there, each of them has only one right answer, all right? And there's five multiple-choice questions with four choices each. And uh, each of those only has one right answer. So I could, I'm asked to create a sampling distribution or probability distribution to illustrate how a random chance process could perform on this test. And then what is the probability uh, of randomly guessing on each question could allow a person to receive 75% or greater on this test. Ooh, that, that's poorly worded. Change that to what is the probability that randomly guessing on each question could allow a person to receive 75% or greater on this test. All right, we could do this in a few different ways. We could probably figure this out analytically as well. And what I'm gonna do is run a a simulation to do this. So uh, I will simulate a process of a random coin flip, so to speak, or a random test taker. And I will create the test. I will make the random test taker randomly take the test. And I will simulate this process, let's say 10,000 times. And this will give me a good idea about all the different kinds of outcomes that could happen. So let's get started. All right, we can do this with the R binome function. So normally you might use it in a way that's kind of like this. So this would be sample, basically doing a coin toss. We're going to, um, every time we do this, we're gonna flip a coin and get a one or a zero, 50% probability. So in this function, n is the number of observations. And actually, this can be a vector. So for example, if n equals 1, 1, 1, then we can set the probabilities of each. So size is one's number of trials. Um, then we can set the probability here for each of those things happening. So for example, if we wanted to flip three, in three coins independently at the same time, we could do it like this. And get different answers depending on um, what happens. Now, what I'd like to do is model the situation up here. So we have um, five true-false questions and five multiple-choice questions. So there's 10 total different questions. And I can make 10 ones in a row, vector of 10 ones, just like this. And I want to make here, um, well, let's, we can spell it out, I guess. 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0
0.5. So for the first five questions, the probability of getting a correct answer is 50%, right? There's only two options. One of them is right. So there's a 50% probability of getting a correct answer. For the last five questions, there's a 0.25 probability of getting the correct answer because there are four choices. One divided by four is 0.25. All right, so if we run this, we're going to get series uh, series of ones and zeros, just like this. And we can interpret these as um, performance on a test. So for example, if there's a one, it means that the random process got the answer correct. So here, we would say that this random process got the first three questions correct and the last question correct. If we do it again, uh, this one got question two, three, and four correct, and the question seven correct. So what I'd like to do is use the replicate function, and I would like to replicate this process 10,000 times effectively um, comp having a random process complete the test 10,000 times. So now the simulated test of, uh, object is a matrix and each column in the matrix is an example participant or a test taker, and it goes all the way to 10,000. We have to scroll over for more. This is taking a while to load there. Okay, so now what I want to do is figure out what the scores were on the test. So what I'm going to do is call sums. I'm going to add up the columns here. And that gives me all of these values. This, this is the total out of 10. So if we divide that by 10, I can get a variable called simulated scores. And I could quickly plot this. Let's use uh, qplot here. We'll give it simulated scores and a histogram. Forgot to load ggplot. Here we are. All right, so out of 10,000, uh, these are the kinds of scores that a totally random process could get. And we solved the first part. So what is the probability that you could get greater than 75% on the test? Well, we could estimate that here. We could say simulated scores. Like, let's find out how many simulated scores are greater than 0.75. And we can get the length of this. And so there's 59 of those. There's 10,000 total. So we've estimated the probability of getting a score of 75% or greater as 0 0.0059. We could improve our estimate by increasing the number of replications that we did in this Monte Carlo simulation. And those are some example solutions for these problems.